there's rhythm, there's prosody. When you, if you read poetry, um, you will naturally start to invoke certain rhythmic relationships between the stanzas, between the couplets or whatever it is, or however it's constructed, their various means. But um, I just think one of the things we're doing here is a classic Western fallacy, which is to think of these things as products that we consume as opposed to processes which we engage with. Um, so uh, now we have electronic means to produce music and so we can sort of disguise the fact that there is action required in order for music to happen. Um, so the, the thing, uh, many languages don't distinguish between music and dance. The two things are the same. Uh, as soon as we hear music, our brains engage with action processes which lead to engagement with the music, rhythm, foot tapping, dancing, of course, being the, the uh, gesture of music. Um, but in language, it's the same. When we speak, uh, and of course, you know, writing is a very recent phenomena. It's not something that it characterizes human history. When we speak, we are already processing the gestural component of the utterance we're making prior to the words that we're going to utter. And, uh, and, and with music, it's the same. Without the gesture that produces that music, so for me, playing instruments, uh, and, and I'm, I'm looking forward to Harum's uh, uh, installation, uh, I'm sure we'll have some movement in it. There will be some action. And it's that action which is producing the music. So when we think of music just as sound, we're missing the context, the ecological niche of music, which is much more an embodied process as opposed to simply an artifact that we consume.